I'm going to tell you the whole complete unabridged story of the woman at the well, because this is a very, very important story. It's also one of the most memorable stories in Jesus' life and ministry that's ever been told. And part of the reason why it is such a memorable story is because it hits a lot of really important concepts just right underneath the surface. Things that we actually talked about in our Kingdom Worker session. The idea of observing before we interpret. And this story is full of that. We make a lot of assumptions as human beings about ourselves. And we make a lot of assumptions about each other. You're going to see that in this story. The prejudices that we hold against one another sometimes carry on through time and through generations. And you're going to see that in this story. Even the purpose of Jesus coming to earth as a human. You're going to see that in this story. So a lot of really important themes come up in this story. You can find this story in your Bibles in the New Testament book of John chapter 4. But this is essentially how it works. Jesus was leaving Judea and he was on his way to Galilee. And in order to get to Galilee, he had to pass through this area called Samaria. And in Samaria lived a group of people known as Samaritans. All right? Now, a little interesting backstory about Samaritans. Very similar to the kind of stuff that's happening in Ireland. Okay? Jesus is Jewish. And Samaritans are not exactly. See, Samaritans are a mix between half Jewish and half other races. And so they are a mixed race people. And in ancient Jewish history and culture, someone who was of mixed race was considered unclean. So there is a lot of history between Jews and Samaritans, and it's not good. They're not friends. There's a lot of bad, bad, bad blood between the two groups. So in many ways, Jesus is walking in to enemy territory when he walks into this space. Now, if the name Samaritan sounds familiar, it's because Jesus used a Samaritan in a very, very important parable that he told known as the good... That's right, the Good Samaritan. Great story, highly recommend you read it. So Jesus and his disciples, it's about lunchtime, and they stop in this little Samaritan village, and they're hungry, so they kind of sit at this well, and the disciples go away to find some food, and Jesus is sitting alone at the well, waiting for food. It's noon and lunchtime, and he thinks he's alone, but he's not alone for long, because lo and behold, a Samaritan woman, a Samaritan woman comes to draw water from the well. Question, anybody here live in a rural area or on a farm and either drink well water or draws their water from a well? Yes? Okay. Has anybody, because, you know, it's the 21st century, so we have a lot of modern contraptions. My guess is the well kind of works itself with some kind of a machine. Has anybody actually had to draw water manually from a well? Yes? No? It it's a lot, right? For those of you who've done it, I mean, like a rope and a bucket. and yeah, like It's like back-breaking work to have to draw water from a well, which is why, back in the time of Jesus, typically women were the ones that drew water from a well, and they did it early, early, early in the morning so that they didn't have to do back-breaking work in the heat of the day. So it's interesting that this Samaritan woman has come here to draw water from a well in the afternoon. And not only did she come in the afternoon, but she came alone. The implications of both of these are that there's some isolation going on in her life. She's either not liked or doesn't like being around other people in the same village that she lives in. So she goes at a completely different time than the rest of the women who come to draw water. She comes in the heat of the day and lo and behold, she comes to get water from a well and she runs into something she wasn't expecting, which is Jesus. And this is the first taboo of this story, because a Jewish man is about to have a conversation with a Samaritan woman, and that is a big taboo. And equally a big taboo is that a man is about to have a conversation with a woman, or rather a woman's going to have a conversation with a man that she's not married to. And in ancient Jewish culture, that was also a big no-no. So two major no-nos are about to take place. And what's really interesting is Jesus obviously knows the history between Jews and Samaritans. He has a choice to make. If Jesus was any other man, he probably would have been very unkind to this woman. He could have said things like, what are you doing here? Only losers come at noon to draw water from the well. Or he could have said something really childish, like a girl, gross. Like something like that. But Jesus didn't do any of those things. He treated the Samaritan woman like no other Jewish man had ever treated her. He treated her like she had value. And the way that he did that was by looking at her in the face and asking her a question. Asking her if he could have a drink. 
Now, this Samaritan woman is completely taken aback by Jesus. She doesn't know what to make of this guy because he doesn't, like, fit the stereotype of, like, what a typical Jewish man is supposed to be or how he's supposed to act. So she says something kind of along the lines of, um, I don't think we're supposed to be talking because, <laughs> you know, you're a, and, you know, I'm a, and so, you know, this feels really weird, and I'm a little skeptical of your whole thing, and you asking me for something like that feels, I don't know, that we're not the same thing. So I, I don't know that we should be having a conversation. And I totally get that. I totally get that kind of skeptical tension that sometimes happens, and maybe you do too. Some of you in this room get that idea of maybe being a little bit skeptical when someone comes on too fast, and you're like, what, are you, what do you want? Do you need something from me? What is going on here? For those of you who maybe this is like your first time ever to like a church thing or anything about Jesus, you've got all these people around you talking about Jesus, right? And if you didn't grow up in the church and this is new to you, you're probably a little bit skeptical of anybody who's trying to engage you in a conversation. They're saying things like, come to Jesus, he'll give you life. Just give him your heart. Just do all these things. And your first response might be a lot like the Samaritan woman. Like, I don't know you and we're not the same and... I don't, I, can, I don't know that we can engage in this kind of thing. Skepticism, that's a very normal thing that takes place when you're being introduced to something that is new and foreign to you. But Jesus' response to the Samaritan woman is perfect. Look at what he says in verse 10. He says this, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Living water. Now, the Samaritan woman is confused. Like, if she wasn't confused before, she is thoroughly confused at this point. Because did this man just say to me that I should be asking him for water? Hilarious! Because the only person I see here with a bucket is me. That's what she's thinking. You're completely worthless. You're a man standing here at noon with zero bucket. How are you going to give me water? She has moved into the second phase that I think many of us move into when we're wrestling with our faith. And that phase is doubt. We wrestle with this doubt thing that happens. She's thinking to herself, I have been drawing water from this well for years. For years. And so have my ancestors. And I've been doing it all by myself. So what is it, Jesus, that you could offer me that is better than what is sitting right here in front of me? What is it that you have that's better than this thing right here that we've been doing for a long time? Long before you were here. And Jesus has an answer for that as well. In verse 13, he says this. Jesus says to her, well, whoever drinks this water right here, they'll be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water that I give him will never be thirsty. The water that I give him will become in him a well of life that lasts forever. What Jesus was offering the Samaritan woman was something different than drinking water. It's what he refers to as living water. It's not a temporary fix, but a permanent fix. It's not a band-aid on an open wound. It's a complete healing. The water that Jesus was offering her, and by extension us, is a water that restores your soul the way God created it to function. Not just in this life, but in next life for all of eternity. And the water may not have fixed the Samaritan woman's immediate problem of needing actual drinking water right then. But it was going to fix her spiritual sickness of sin with living water, a water that comes only from a God powerful enough to provide it. The Samaritan woman, still thinking they're talking about actual water, is super excited about this water upgrade. So she says in verse 15, sir, give me this water. Boy, that'd be great. So I'm never thirsty again. Then I won't have to come all this way to get it. <laughs> like just, yeah, that's great. Upgrade of water. Love it. Love everything you're saying. I will take some of that water. The next thing Jesus says to this woman completely blows her away because there is absolutely no way Jesus could have known this. This is what he says to her. He says, go, to your, go call your husband and come back. The woman said, I have no husband. And Jesus says, you're not wrong. You're right. You told the truth when you said, I have no husband. You've had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. So you have told the truth. You see, in order for the Samaritan woman to receive this living water that Jesus is talking about, she has to do something that all of us have to do at some point. We have to deal with the reality of our sin. We have to deal with it. It's a very important step. It's such an important step in saying yes to Jesus, coming to the reality that you are not enough 
but Christ in you makes you more than enough. So the Samaritan woman asks him a couple of of questions, some history-related questions of which Jesus answers. And then this is what happens in verse 28. The woman left her water jar and went into town. She said to the men, come, come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. It was a little weird. Can this be the Christ? They went out of town and they came to him. She was so overwhelmed, convicted, motivated by all that Jesus had said, she left the water and ran back to the well to go tell everybody she knew about what just took place. I don't know if you heard that part. She left the water which she came for to begin with at the well because apparently something else was way more important than drinking water at that moment. All of a sudden, she had discovered something that was way more valuable than the water she actually came for. Is it possible that whatever it is that you came here for, that you're supposed to leave here with something better, with something different, with something living? She might have left empty-handed. She didn't have any physical water when she went. But what she did bring back to the people in her village was a testimony. Now she has a story. And she did something that's such an important part of what it means to be a kingdom worker. She said, come and see it. You have to see it to believe it. Come meet a man who told me everything I've ever did. Could he be the Messiah, the Christ, the one that we're waiting for? What would be the purpose of us telling you this story today? Of all the stories that we could tell you, why this story, why this story tonight? Because if you lived in the desert, like they do in the Middle East, and you found a well that runs with drinking water, finding that well could mean the difference between life and death. And when you live with sin, like we all do, finding a Savior that offers living water is the difference between life and death. Because if you knew, if you really knew who this Jesus is that we've been talking about this entire week, you would not hesitate to let him be your good shepherd. Because he is the only one who can give you water that lasts for a lifetime. I want to send it back to Mallory so that she can wrap this up for us. But I want you to keep that in mind. If you knew the Jesus we were really talking about you would gladly ask him for the water that he wants to gladly give you. Let's take a look. 